frankly, some of the treatment of uh, Judge Gorsuch has made me ill. In him, we have a man who is superbly qualified and who quite obviously understands how his job is to say what the law is, not what he wishes it might be. In fact, I do not believe that any fair examination of the whole of his record on the bench can reasonably yield any meaningful case or clues as to what his policy views are. He is the kind of nominee that, in an ideal world, we should be able to confirm by universal acclamation. Yet that is not the sort of treatment we are seeing. Far from it. Instead, we see a desperate campaign being waged against him to derail his nomination at all costs. This is the sort of approach that has long been advocated for by many far-left activists intent on attacking and uh, in their belligerent ways and stacking the courts with ideologues committed to imposing liberal policies without respect for what, what the law and the Constitution may actually command. Consider also the way in which some of my colleagues misrepresented Judge Gorsuch's record. It involved just a few simple steps. First, cherry pick one of the judge's opinions in which a sympathetic victim lost. Next, gloss over the legal issues at hand that uh, mandated the outcome. Judge Gorsuch reached uh, the outcome that Judge Gorsuch reached. Then, fail to mention how he was often joined in these opinions by his colleagues appointed by Presidents Clinton and Obama. After that, fail to mention the many times that Judge Gorsuch ruled in favor of litigants similar to the one that lost in the case at hand. And finally, make a wild assertion and accusation about how that case shows how Judge Gorsuch is biased against, quote, the little guy, unquote. Mr. President, we should call these phony attacks for what they are, bogus attempts to mischaracterize his record inten intentionally. And fair analysis of the record Judge Gorsuch has established on the bench can lead to only one conclusion. He is the type of judge who will reach the result commanded by the best reading of the law, free from any political agenda. He follows his oath to do justice without respect to persons, and as Judge Gorsuch himself rightly put it, rightfully put it, quoting Justice Scalia, quote, if you're going to be a good and faithful judge, you have to resign yourself to the fact that you're not always going to like the conclusions you reach. If you like them all the time, you're probably doing something wrong, unquote. Mr. President, in Judge Gorsuch, we have a Supreme Court nominee as fine as I could ever imagine. He's the type of man we all should be clamoring to step into the, uh, to, to, uh, step into the late Justice Scalia's big shoes. And instead of the best traditions of the advice and consent process that many of us have tried to live up to, what is he treated to? Hypocritical attacks on the very judicial independence that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle claim to prize above all else. Misleading attacks that distort his record. And now a promise to filibuster his nomination by the minority leader. My gosh, what have, we, what have we come to around here? Now, Mr. President, this is a travesty of the highest order. Judge Gorsuch is a brilliant, decent man who has devoted his life to, doing, uh, to serving his country. <coughs> Excuse me. He has done exactly what we want of a careful judge for more than a decade. What, do, what does he get when nominated to the highest court in the land? He gets his name dragged through the mud. He gets halted with, or baited with questions we all know he cannot answer, that nobody can answer. They're, if not trick questions, they're certainly improper. And then he's attacked for not answering. He gets his record mischaracterized, accused of cruelty and hardness of heart. He gets the kind of treatment that leads him to, re to regret putting his family through what ought to be a dignified process. 
Mr. President, it is time to stop this madness. Stop the dishonest attacks and scorched earth tactics. Instead, let's have a debate worthy of the world's greatest deliberative body and confirm this absolutely outstanding nominee. Mr. President, it is with great disappointment that I rise today to address the treatment of Judge Neil uh, Gorsuch by my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. Today marks the close of his confirmation hearing, which began on Monday. This hearing was extraordinarily thorough, examining just about every facet of his record and his life. The nominee himself delivered an outstanding performance in enduring more than 20 hours of intense questioning over two very long days. He displayed an impressive command of the law and the kind of intellect one expects of someone with such stellar credentials. He showed the proper understanding of the role of judges or the role of a judge in our constitutional system of, gover of self-government to apply, not make the law. He demonstrated this crucial quality both in his affirmative answers and in the times that he appropriately refused to prejudge issues that might come before him. Throughout his demeanor was serious, thoughtful, and humble. These qualities have defined his service as a judge for the last decade and will serve him well on the United States Supreme Court. As for my fellow senators, many of them approached this hearing the right way, posing questions that gave us real insight into the nominee's record and judicial philosophy. Thanks to their hard work, Judge Gorsuch has now been vetted as extensively as any nominee to come before us before the Senate in the whole length of my service here. I want to thank them for their careful work and good judgment. In particular, I, in particular, I want to single out my friend and colleague, Senator Grassley. As chairman of the Judiciary Committee, he was charged with the monumental task of planning and executing the whole endeavor. He performed admirably, and we all owe him our sincere gratitude. He's one of the best people here, and he's totally honest and decent. Regretfully, I feel compelled to contrast the responsible approach of many of my colleagues with the actions of a number on the other side of the aisle. Frankly, some of the treatment of uh, Judge Gorsuch has made me ill. In him, we have a man who is superbly qualified and who quite obviously understands how his job is to say what the law is, not what he wishes it might be. In fact, I do not believe that any fair examination of the whole of his record on the bench can reasonably yield any meaningful case or clues as to what his policy views are. He is the kind of nominee that, in an ideal world, we should be able to confirm by universal acclamation. Yet that is not the sort of treatment we are seeing. Far from it. Instead, we see a desperate campaign being waged against him to derail his nomination at all costs. This is the sort of approach that has long been advocated for by many far-left activists intent on attacking and uh, in their belligerent ways and stacking the courts with ideologues committed to imposing liberal policies without respect for what, what the law and the Constitution may actually command. As someone with great respect for all of my colleagues, even those with whom I often disagree, I had hoped that they would resist the siren sound or the siren song of their activist base and give Judge Gorsuch a fair shake. Unfortunately, I see many of them falling prey to the temptations of this scorched earth approach. Whatever their motivation, be it the outcome of the Garland nomination, the apparent unwillingness to accept the results of the election, or the desire for judges to, per, uh, to push their political agenda, many of them appear willing to employ tactics that they use to re recognize right, rightly as inappropriate and even dangerous. In doing so, they threaten to inflict lasting damage on the judiciary, the Senate, and our politics more broadly. 
Consider their demand that Judge Gorsuch answer politically charged hypotheticals about potential future cases. For decades, nominees of both parties have refused to co uh, comply, so much so that the practice is then referred to as the Ginsburg Standard, after current Justice Ginsburg. And they have been quite right to do so, to offer an advisory opinion is inconsistent with the Constitution's allocation of powers, which, gives, give, which give judges the authority to decide only actual cases and controversies, not offer broad advisory opinions. It is inconsistent with the core characteristic of the judicial process, which is, which is considered which considers uh, issues in the, in the particular legal and factual context of an individual case and gives parties the opportunity to make their arguments in full. And it asks judges to prejudice themselves when they should be neutral, when they should be neutral arbiters, raising serious due process concerns for future litigants who deserve a fair hearing. Having participated in 14 confirmation hearings for Supreme Court uh, nominees, I fully understand the temptation to ask these kinds of questions. Indeed, I have seen many senators of both parties fall prey to the temptation only to have a nominee politely respond about how it would be inappropriate to answer. Mr. President, it is one thing to make the occasional mistake of this variety and move on. Uh, I've seen it happen countless of times, but that is not what happened this week. Instead, I witnessed many of my colleagues devote almost their entire half-hour rounds to posing these sorts of inappropriate questions. And when Judge Gorsuch responded appropriately and explained his inability to answer, oftentimes with an extensive explanation of the rationale for, for, uh, for doing so, he was lambasted by some of my colleagues for his uh, refusal to engage in this dangerous practice. Worse yet, these harsh attacks came from senators whom I have seen gladly embrace the very same answer from nominees in the past. What they once demanded, they now reject. What they once avoided, they now embrace. Simply put, it is hard not to interpret their attacks as hypocrisy of the highest order. This is a completely illegitimate line of attack on Judge Gorsuch, and it should be repudiated forcefully. Consider also the way in which some of my colleagues misrepresented Judge Gorsuch's record. It involved just a few simple steps. First, cherry-pick one of the judge's opinions in which a sympathetic victim lost. Next, gloss over the legal issues at hand that uh, mandated the outcome. Judge Gorsuch reached uh, the outcome that Judge Gorsuch reached. Then, fail to mention how he was often joined in these opinions by his colleagues appointed by Presidents Clinton and Obama. After that, fail to mention the many times that Judge Gorsuch ruled in favor of litigants similar to the one that lost in the case at hand. And finally, make a wild ac assertion and accusation about how that case shows how Judge Gorsuch is biased against, quote, the little guy, unquote. Mr. President, we should call these phony attacks for what they are, bogus attempts to mischaracterize his record intent intentionally. And fair analysis of the record Judge Gorsuch has established on the bench can lead to only one conclusion. He is the type of judge who will reach the result commanded by the best reading of the law, free from any political agenda. He follows his oath to do justice without respect to persons, and as Judge Gorsuch himself rightly put it, rightfully put it, quoting Justice Scalia, quote, if you're going to be a good and faithful judge, you have to resign yourself to the fact that you're not always going to like the conclusions you reach. If you like them all the time, you're probably doing something wrong, unquote. There will always be times that the law pro produces a result we disagree with. That's a simple fact of life. 
And sometimes that's our fault for not writing the law better. But the appropriate response is to change, change the law, not to demand that a judge ignore the law to reach a result we like. As legislators, it is by definition our responsibility to change the law to produce better, more just results. If my colleagues think that a law like the Religious Freedom Restoration Act is producing bad results, it is their right to try to change it. They can count on me fighting them tooth and nail to protect religious liberty, but at least they will be doing their job as lawmakers, not shrinking from it and demanding that unelected judges do their dirty work nor impugning the honor of good judges like Neil Gorsuch that refuse, uh, not impugning the, the, the honor of good judges like Neil Gorsuch that refuse to ignore the law on behalf of a political agenda. Mr. President, in Judge Gorsuch, we have a Supreme Court nominee as fine as I could ever imagine. He's the type of man we all should be clamoring to step into the, uh, to, to uh, step into the late Justice Scalia's big shoes. And instead of the best traditions of the advice and consent process that many of us have tried to live up to, what is he treated to? Hypocritical attacks on the very judicial independence that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle claim to prize above all else. Misleading attacks that distort his record. And now a promise to filibuster his nomination by the minority leader. My gosh, what have, we, what have we come to around here? I remember when Justice Ginsburg went through with, I think, only three votes against her. And not much debate. And she refused to answer any of the questions that, uh, that uh, my friends on the other side were demanding of Judge Gorsuch and of other Republican judges. Mr. President, and, and, and frankly, I stuck up for her and felt that was the right thing for her. I have great respect for, for her because of the way she handled those proceedings and others as well. We didn't do this in, in earlier years. It's become so radical around here and so political around here that we're besmirching these very people who have become the judges in this land and are doing such a good job. Now, Mr. President, this is a travesty of the highest order. Judge Gorsuch is a brilliant, decent man who has devoted his life to, doing, uh, to serving his country. <coughs> Excuse me. He has done exactly what we want of a careful judge for more than a decade. What, do, what does he get when nominated to the highest court in the land? He gets his name dragged through the mud. He gets halted with, or baited with questions we all know he cannot answer, that nobody can answer. They're, if not trick questions, they're certainly improper. And then he's attacked for not answering. He gets his record mischaracterized, accused of cruelty and hardness of heart. He gets the kind of treatment that leads him to, re to regret putting his family through what ought to be a dignified process. Mr. President, it is time to stop this madness. Stop the dishonest attacks and scorched earth tactics. Instead, let's have a debate worthy of the world's greatest deliberative body and confirm this absolutely outstanding nominee.